Now it's time for the leader to share for 15 to 20 minutes. I'll take uh, a warning at 12. Jane, thanks. I'm Nan, I'm a compulsive eater. Hi, Nan. And I'll pass around my picture. Um, my top weight was 304. And I went to the doctor yesterday for a, a regular thing, and uh, they weigh you at the doctor. <laughs> and so um, I was 126 yesterday. And I say that out loud because I was a liar about food and weight my whole life. And um, today I don't lie about food and weight. Um, I have not lied about food and weight since I came into this room January 14, 2012. But up until then, I lied to sponsors, I lied to friends, I lied to my parents, I lied to my husbands, plural, <clears throat> lied to my children, co-workers, and strangers at the pink box store. You know, I would say things like, oh, Mary wants this, and Susie wants that, and, and they were all for me. I had a routine, I would stop at the pink box store almost every day after a full breakfast at home. And um, I had five different ones that I would go to because I didn't want the thin person behind the counter thinking that I ate like this all the time. <clears throat> and my size announced itself. I did eat like that all the time, but I was totally crazy in the food. I was uh, ashamed and I was lying and I was fantasizing and I was, um, wrapped up in it. It consumed me. <clears throat> Sorry, I have voice problems. What I ate, what I didn't eat, how I was going to get rid of it, how I was going to hide it, how I was going to lie about it, took 24 hours a day. Mm. I had, I'm not, I'm exaggerating, that's hyperbole. I actually slept too. But sleep was my escape also. And I ate to feel numb. And I ate to feel um, I wanted to feel blacked out. Uh, I wanted to eat to the point of unconsciousness. So it was difficult to go to sleep because in going to sleep, there's those few moments where your mind is starting to go to rest. And my mind would start spinning, you know. So I would fall asleep to um, something like the TV or something like that because I couldn't bear to be in those thoughts. And those thoughts were all very negative and very shame-based and very, um, you know, reprimanding. You've got to take care of this. You're, you know, you're fat, you're disgusting, you're this, you're that. And um, I couldn't, couldn't stand the negativity, couldn't stand the self-chastisement, but then my solution, get up and eat again the next day, you know. And every day I'd say, I'm not going to do it today. And I would do it by seven o'clock. Or I might sometimes make it till 10. And then I was off and running again. And I know that people in this room know what that's like. To wake up every day and to want to be clean or even or normal with food. And I just never was. <coughs> I was either dieting or binging basically my whole life. I was never normal. And I used to think if I could just eat like a normal person, that was my, my dream. And when I started observing normal people, the truth is they don't eat anywhere near what I thought they ate. They eat a half of something. They leave things on their plate. They don't have dessert two times a day. Normal eaters. And I used to think that they did, and I wanted to be normal. And uh, it took me almost a lifetime to come to step one. And that I'm powerless over food, that I cannot manage my own life. I didn't think I was powerless. I didn't believe I was powerless. I was huge. I was miserable. My thighs rubbed together. They bled. I had to put desitin on every day and baby powder just to function. Mm. And I kept insisting that I had the power within me to cure this thing, to fix this thing. And I just wasn't accessing my power. Therefore, I was bad because I had that power and I wasn't using it. And everything out there in the world told me that that was correct. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, The um, Art of Positive Thinking, um, self-help books, Oprah Winfrey, everybody said, you've got inner power, 
use that inner power. I misunderstood it all and I skewed it all because actually there is a power. That power is something greater than myself. It's not necessarily within me though. And I couldn't take that step. I would, I would come to various OA meetings through the years. I was first exposed to OA back in the 70s. And um, I ran from there because I, I, didn't, I felt very, very different. And I didn't like any of the talk about God. It frightened me and I ran away. Um, and then of course I did everything else. Weight Watchers many times. I was a Weight Watcher lecturer. Um, I did OptiFast. I lost 138 pounds on OptiFast in 10 months. Never had a single bite. Um, and I thought when I got slim, I thought, well I was never slim, I was average. Um, I thought, oh, now I'll, now I'll start my life. And it surprised me when I started eating again. I was actually surprised. I, uh, I would see myself as if I was outside myself eating and I'd, I'd say, you can't, you can't do this. And yet I couldn't stop. And what I didn't hear was that I had an addiction to certain foods that set off the phenomenon of craving. And that I think is what makes me different from normal people or normies out there is that I don't believe they experience the same phenomenon of craving. But for me, the, the craving is so strong that I can, I can white knuckle it for a certain period of time. And those would be my diets. And they might be weeks, they might be months, they might even be a year. But I'm always hanging on. And the tension is building and building and building and building. And eventually that tension is just gonna blow. And I would give in and I would eat. And once I was eating, I would have all kinds of thoughts like, well, you've blown it now, so you might as well make it worth it. You know, now you have to have everything that you've said no to for the last six weeks or six months or whatever it was. And um, everything that would come up, a, a holiday, a birthday, and a celebration of some sort, if I was newly clean again or on a diet or abstinent in another food fellowship, I would think too, well, I've only got 17 days. Mm. What the heck? You know, I might as well have this and then I'll start again. And um, that brought me back to a, a new kind of hell. Um, I was in another food fellowship for um, more than 10 years and I was successful the first two years. And after that, I started slipping. And um, I would have periods of, periods of Clean, li um, clean living with food, but I was not weighing and measuring without exception, and I was eating in restaurants a lot, and I was addicted to Diet Coke. Mm. <clears throat> so eventually, I think my lowest weight in um, CA How was like 140 pounds or something. When I walked in here, I was 228, and I was surprised. I didn't know I was 228, because I didn't know we had to weigh ourselves once a month. If I had known that, I probably wouldn't have come. I was that afraid of the scale, which translates to, I was that afraid of the truth. I could not face the truth. And I, I knew I was getting heavier. I knew I was buying new clothes. Everything was the art of graceful draping, <laughs> a phrase from my, from my friend. And um, when you're 228, it's draping, but it's not necessarily great. And, um, and, you know, I just um, was like the man in the big book who's pounding his fist on the bar saying, how did I get here again? And um, that phenomenon of craving, I, I just could not withstand it. So the, um, a friend in another food fellowship that I had sponsored um, was going to Gracie. And I saw her at a function, and she was happy, joyous, and free. She'd always been beautiful, and she'd always been slim when I knew her, but something was different about her, and it was the happiness. And it was the freedom from the food obsession. And I asked her what she was doing, and she told me gray sheet, and she told me a little bit about it. Um, she did say that at that time she had five years, and she had weighed and measured every meal without exception. And I found that very hard to believe. I believed her, but I didn't really think that was possible. How could somebody weigh and measure their food for five 
years, every day, mm -hmm. every day. And I said to her, even the green stuff? She goes, yeah, even the green stuff. I said, even in restaurants? Yeah, even in restaurants. I just found it beyond my ken. So um, I tucked that information away. I probably should have gone the next day to a meeting with her. But I tucked it away and kept telling myself, this Monday, that's it. I got to get it together. I got to get it together. And about nine months went by and more and more demoralization. Finally, I picked up the phone. It was Christmas time. Uh, it was just after Christmas time. And one more, one more season of not joy yeah. and uh, compulsive eating and hiding it because people thought I was on a program and I had people staying in my house. So I was waiting for them to go to sleep so I could go in the kitchen and sneak eat. And I was so afraid of being caught. It was just a horrible time. And um, I called her on January 12th or 11th and I said, I'm really in trouble. And she said, I'll take you to a meeting. And the meeting was Saturday, it was here. It was a couple of days later. And when we were in the car, um, she said, the only advice I'll give you is be willing to be a newcomer. And I thought, oh, thank God, you know, I don't know anything. Because I thought I knew everything. I knew about nutrition. I knew about the calories. I knew about, I knew all kinds of stuff. But I was fat and miserable and eating compulsively. So she said, be willing to be a newcomer. And I said, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do one other thing. And that is, I'm not going to lie anymore. I'm not going to lie. And for me, that was the biggest deal because I've been a liar for so long. And the freedom from lying about food and lying about weight has been the biggest blessing that I never expected. I, I hoped that Gray Sheep would give me one more chance at weight loss. Frankly, I was, I was interested in weight loss. I didn't know that it would be this free. I didn't know that I would have Oh, thank you, Jane. I didn't know that I'd have all that time in between meals to actually think about things other than food. I didn't know that I could sleep peacefully at night. I didn't know that I would have relationships with people that are clean and current. And today my life has changed. I'm a much softer person. I have tons of faults, but I'm a much softer person. I care about other people. I give service, I'm not totally wrapped up in myself. Um, and I, I, I wish we could have the whole, everyone that, that needs this program, I wish they could come. As I said, I went to the doctor yesterday and in the past I wouldn't go to doctors because I was afraid of being weighed and I was afraid of being chastised. The person who checked me in at the door was overweight, probably significantly overweight. The person who weighed me was maybe 50 pounds overweight. And the person who took care of me was probably 75 pounds overweight. And when I got on the scale in clothes after having had two meals, I could still look at the number and not let it affect me. Like I'm bad, I'm good. It's just a number like blood pressure. And then when they said, do you exercise? I was able to say yes, you know, without lying about it. You know, so um, my experience with physicians and all of that has, has changed. And, but more importantly, um, I've changed and I've um, gone through a couple of AWOLs and learned a lot about my patterns, the things I need to change. And I'm, of course, still working on those. So mm -hmm. thank you for letting me share about all that stuff today. Thanks. Thanks.